Hey guys, it's Brooke with Super Tutor TV. Today, what we're gonna talk about, for those of you who are interested in improving your score and maybe you watched our video on how to get a perfect score on the ACT and you just wanna know more, we're going to talk about how I coached a student to a perfect 36 on the ACT. So as many of you know, I've scored perfectly as an adult on the ACT, and I recently actually coached a student to a super score of a 36 on the ACT. But what I'm gonna focus on is my student who scored a straight up 36 a couple of years ago, and sort of what we did and, and what our game plan was, and what steps we took during our prep so that you guys can just learn a little bit more about that specific process. Before we get too deep into things though, I wanna encourage everyone here to subscribe to our channel. All you have to do is click the subscribe button, give this video a thumbs up. And the other advice that I would give you is go to our website, supertutortv.com slash subscribe and subscribe to our mailing list. That's where you're gonna hear about all our latest and greatest sales, deals, discounts, new products, everything awesome under the sun. And we have lots of ACT materials coming out in the next several months. So if you are prepping for the ACT and you want the very best in prep materials and resources, definitely plug into our network and let's get started with this video. Here's sort of the setup of this student who came to me. She was an online Skype student, so I worked with her via Skype on the internet. And she and her family approached me and basically said, our daughter wants to get a perfect score on the ACT. So that was the goal going in. And this particular student was definitely down to put in whatever it took in order to make that happen. We started, she was a rising junior. We started in on the process in about July of the summer and she was planning to take the September exam. I think when she first started prepping and I'm not 100% sure, but I think her practice test was around a 28. And then she worked with, I believe, another prep company, did some self-study. She may have even worked with a tutor or two, but she basically had done other prep before she got to me. So by the time she got to me and she was scoring, say, 32, 33 on some practice tests, kind of in that range, she already knew a lot of the basics of the test. She knew the basic overview of the test. She had gotten to the point that she could finish most of the sections on time, so she didn't have major timing issues. She knew your standard grammar rules. If you guys are studying for this test, you know there's like several English grammar rules and things that you need to know, like subject-verb agreement, pronoun case, sentence structure, comma splice errors, all that kind of good stuff. So she knew all that already. And then she'd also done some math content work. So I didn't do what I would call like a thorough math content run with her. Sometimes with students who have a ton of time to prep and have very ambitious goals, I will start with the first section of math that you have to be responsible for and work through every type of problem. And the theory of basically doing that with math when I work with students is the idea that part of the issue on the math section is not just figuring out how to do the problems you don't have know how to do, which show up at the end. It's also being able to master the problems that come up earlier in the quickest and most efficient way so that by the time you get to the end of the test, you have the time to figure it out. So that's why sometimes I do a really fundamental, like broad sweep of the math section and we just do everything. So what we basically focused on at that point were practice tests because she, what she was having trouble with it were problems that essentially, what I would call are very ACT-esque, meaning they're the kind of problems that you have trouble with either A, because they're kind of tricky because they're like ACT tricky problems. For example, in the English grammar section, I'm thinking of like comma errors. There's a lot of comma errors on the ACT that are the kind of things that even if you read a grammar book on commas, they can be sort of hard to dice out. Idiomatic usage questions, placement, transition kind of questions, right? Those sort of things that aren't just straight up grammar rules, but they're a little more complex. And that's usually normal. When I have students who are scoring in the 30s and they're trying to like make that bump from like 32, 33, to the 35, 36 region, usually those kind of questions are what people are struggling with. So thanks to the internet and lots of people who have randomly uploaded copies of ACTs that we found via Google searches on the internet, she downloaded and printed out just tons and tons of real practice tests and took about three to five a week for I would say six weeks over the summer starting in late July. And every week she would come to me and she was very organized and she would write down every question that she got wrong and we would go over every question that she got wrong. And while we did our lesson, she would take notes in terms of what she got wrong, why she got it wrong and what she needs to know to get it right the next time. So that's what we would go over as I would review each question with her. So that was basically 
80, 90% of what we did together, she was taking a ton of practice tests. And then every week I would go over her questions on those practice tests and her score started to climb slowly. She went back to school by the end of August and she couldn't do three to five practice tests a week because that's kind of insane. As you know, a practice test takes like four hours about. So we switched to doing a few less a week and maybe we cut back our lessons a little bit. And then she took the September test. On those last few tests before she took the September test, she scored, I think, at least two 36 composites on her practice tests. And then I think she had a couple 35s. I don't remember the exact details, but she did hit 36 a couple of times. So the other thing that I'll say is if you wanna to prep to a perfect score, usually you wanna see that perfect score before you actually walk in the door. And so I knew when she walked into the test, we were expecting a 35 or a 36. I didn't know which one she was gonna get because she had pretty solidly prepped up to that point. And she wasn't the kind of student who had time issues or who like had random flukes on the science section. I sometimes have students who have issues with that. And when you have time issues too, those can actually make your score a lot less predictable. But that's about it. And then she went in and she got a 36 on the test. So that's pretty awesome. One other thing that I'll say that we did throughout that prep process even though we didn't do, like I said, a whole grammar review or a whole math review, we did pop in at times to work on content in those two areas. And if you guys have heard me break down the ACT before, the way that I look at the test is the reading and science are basically all about how you approach data and information. And so those are not really content oriented sections of the test. They're more just you need to practice your habits and your techniques and your approaches kind of sections. So those I think are were best done just doing practice and going over wrong answers, doing more practice, going over wrong answers, sometimes stepping through a passage together, stepping through a science passage together, something like that. But that's how we approach those. The math and the English on the other hand, because there is some content in those, if occasionally I came across something in her knowledge base that was missing, say she didn't know the rules for modifiers, I would send her a packet on modifiers, which is from my not yet published book, on ACT English and she could do that and practice that and get down modifiers. And same with math. If she didn't know how to do matrix multiplication, for example, which is one area that she was a little rusty on, I would give her the PDF chapter from my as of yet not released math book and she would do the whole problem set so that she could get totally up to speed with it and be 100% functioning on matrix problems, check that off her list and know if there's a matrix problem, she knows how to get it right. So that's the other ingredient in addition to going over tests is using them as a diagnostic tool to say, okay, what do I need to drill down content wise so that I'm 100% ready to like take on this test and master it. So to wrap out, I just wanna talk about the basic two ingredients that I think are the most important ingredients to being able to achieve this kind of a feat. One is an incredible level of dedication. As you can see, this student was crazy dedicated to do three to five practice tests a week for like six weeks over the summer. So she was spending 15 to 20 hours a week on the ACT every week during the summer, which is insane. But if you're really dedicated, you see that's one ingredient. And then the other ingredient is having an expert, somebody who totally knows the test in and out and can actually help you understand, well, I don't understand why this is right and this is wrong. If you have a tutor or you have a class or something teaching you and that person only got a 33 or 34 on the exam, they're not always gonna be able to explain every single question. And then you're kind of stuck and you're not necessarily learning the test down to the, the finest detail. So I know what some of you are thinking, oh my God, I don't have time to take that many tests or I don't have the money for a crazy private tutor. And if that's you, what I've tried to do is create a system at supertutortv.com that replicates what I do at a huge fraction of the cost because it's me explaining questions from the real ACT guide and all 400 bonus questions. And then we also have explanations for the old ACT Red Book. So all together, you can get the equivalent of what, like eight full ACT tests. So it's probably not as much as I did for this girl because she was doing so many but it's certainly a start and it's gonna be a lot more affordable than hiring a private tutor. And hopefully it will give you that insight. We're also in the process of developing a complete prep system for the ACT that basically goes through every grammar rule and every type of math question and my basic strategies for the reading and the science sections. And that also could be a resource for you if you're looking to try to get kind of that expert point of view that's gonna help you bump up your score too. It's not just working hard, you've also got to 
be working hard in a way that you're recognizing and understanding the test better. So those are kind of the two ingredients that I think worked into it. So there you go. That's how I coached a student to a perfect score on the ACT. Again, if you're looking to improve your score as much as possible, I definitely recommend that you plug into supertutortv.com. We've got lots of resources here to help you. And I will see all of you guys next time at Super Tutor TV. Thanks for watching.